Some good news for everyone. Um, I read in the Hill that Biden has won over skeptical progressives and everything's great between all the parts of the party. That is an actual headline. <laughs> Like just in general, there's no issues or anything. So let's see, what is the evidence that is provided? Because of course we have to be fair and evidence is provided. Well, two polls out earlier this week showed Biden's approval ratings at almost full support. A Quinnipiac University survey showed Biden with support among Democrats at 94%. That's the sort of level of support that Trump would just randomly lie about in a tweet. <laughs> the results are, un are surprising given the skepticism many progressives had for the 78 year old Biden. But as he approaches the 100 day marker, Biden has been successful in uniting Democrats behind him. It is such a final statement. Like, oh, he's good now, you know, because we passed the COVID aid bill. And so I guess everything's great. No lingering issues with the way that was handled or the lack of the raising of the minimum wage there. No future battles over the Green New Deal, anything like that. It's just done. He succeeded, Jank. It's yeah. good to, to be able to move past that. Yeah, so you know what though, but there, this uh, story is nuanced because um, number one, I believe in polling. Uh, number two, mm -hmm. uh, the, I, I, if you had asked me to guess, I probably wouldn't have guessed numbers that sky high, but, but close. I, I thought uh, Biden is holding the whole Democratic Party really well for now. So now let me explain a couple of important distinctions. So number one, why is he holding the party together so well and is so popular throughout different wings of the party? Well, number one, first, because he deserves credit for doing some good things. The $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill was large and much larger than Obama's and was a positive step in the right direction. Now he didn't do minimum wage, but that's gonna get to point number two in a second. And and he proposed a large infrastructure bill and he did some positive things we didn't expect like a complete withdrawal from Afghanistan. So there are some real reasons for progressives to think not bad, not bad, right? Secondly, and this is the important, most important part, almost no progressive has criticized Biden publicly. So that means there has been no media of progressives being upset with Biden. So if you're a progress, other than us, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're that six percent who's dissatisfied with them, probably all young Turks viewers, uh, and not because we're against them, but because we're sharing real facts with you guys about things he's doing right, but also things he's doing wrong and things that are not remotely progressive, right? So, so since none of the legislators are at all pushing back, not even one percent until this refugee cap situation. Um, then everybody thinks, well, I guess everything's hunky dory. So yes, right? Number three reason, it's a super low bar. After Trump, like anybody who comes in and is like not insane, we're like, yes, <laughs> right? And, and number four is Republicans push back in so many insane ways, it makes all Democrats defensive. Right, so they're like Biden is probably going to be checked into a mental hospital at any moment, and the immigrants have taken over the entire country and replaced us with brown people. So in that context, do you like Biden or don't you? It's hard to vote no, right? If you're a Democrat, and so I think that begins to explain it. Now I think the future is different, but I'll get to that after Bridget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think when you look at the other side, leadership on the right, the kinds of things that they're championing, you know, attacking trans youth, they really have nothing to offer. And so I think by, you know, by comparison, when we see Biden, who is trying, you know, demonstrating that he is interested in governing and leading, I think it's, I think people are, you know, the bar is very low, like you said. I think especially coming from Trump, the bar is very low for what a leader looks like. I also think it's important to note that you know, he's having this support among Democrats after that COVID relief bill passed. You know, I think that we need to see more of Biden leaning into these big policy changes that will actually have a positive impact on like American families. You know, most people in this country, things that we think of as progressive or radical, most people actually support those things. People want progressive policies. We want Medicare for all, we want to raise minimum wage. And so I think the times where Biden can really be in lockstep with what people actually want, I think it's going to serve everybody. But I completely agree. I I was surprised to find these numbers as high as they were. Um, but I think it is a little bit of a um, an absence of leadership. So now we're just happy mm -hmm. and the bar can be a little bit low. You're totally right with the numbers, which I, look, I was being probably needlessly snarky. It is 96%, but I would also say, there's approval and there's approval. Like that is a that is a blanket term that can be applied to varying shades of acceptance, especially during the I think we have to acknowledge 
honeymoon period of a new president and people, whether I can quantify it or not, being more checked out of politics than they've probably been in some time. Um, you know, I, so they did get the one big bill through. The idea that it just it seems like of low utility. Like sure, the poll shows that largely Democratic voters are so far satisfied with him. But like we can learn much more interesting lessons from the one battle that we've had over the COVID bill. What didn't make it in, what did. The issues with how that was managed in terms of the parliamentarian. The concerns over the power that people like Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin, their outsized role inside of the Democratic Party. The like, like I alluded to earlier, the brewing battles over a ton of different issues, including as is noted in this document, the minimum wage, arms sales, the defense budget, his approach to immigration, what he's willing to do and not do on gun, gun control. There's a lot of things like this. Analyzing that just seems like it holds so much more utility for the future than, hey, the, the poll shows that he's good. So I guess that Bernie's gonna be happy and not cause any problems in the future. I don't know, it just, it seems like a weird stance to take after just a couple of months when we've only had one real fight so far. Like, yeah. talk about this after the first attempt to put someone on the Supreme Court, you know, after a big battle over who that should be. Yeah, so John, I, I hear you, but it's a snapshot. All polls are a snapshot, and and I think it's an interesting snapshot. I I don't I don't mind it. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and guys, we also have to be cognizant of not being too wrapped up in our own bubble. Yeah. So we know we're neck deep in the news. We know all mm -hmm. the details. We know what happened with the minimum wage fight. We know all that stuff. The average American, you got to remember, is a dentist, right? And so I've now made the average American <laughs> a dentist, okay? <laughs> so they're not following the news as closely as we are or a lot of our audiences. So they just see whatever they see in, in, in a passing glance. And John, that $15 minimum wage thing is just the perfect example because since Jayapal got all the progressives to stand down, and so did Bernie, by the way. Bernie was a huge part of that. And do not criticize Biden was the message that was sent out. Well, no one, unless they watched the Young Turks, saw that that he even killed the minimum wage. And if you ask any reporter in DC now, is Joe Biden in favor of the minimum wage? Even though he helped kill it just a little while back, every reporter will say he's in favor of the minimum wage. And if you ask him why, they'll say, well, he said so. <laughs> He said so, but he took it out of the bill at the drop of a hat and he got the two Delaware senators to vote no on it. That means Biden doesn't want it. How many national reporters told you that? Zero, because they're not good at their job, okay? And so, and, and when progressives don't push back, it doesn't make it into the media, progressive legislators, because the media cares about legislators because they have power, right? And so that's why it seems like a kumbaya moment. And, and to some degree, that's how it starts out. But most importantly, guys, Looking forward, um, the COVID relief bill was exceedingly easy. And so you were not, even Manchin and Cinema couldn't vote against COVID relief bill, right? And so they could put pressure on to make it worse, which they did, right? But they can't vote against it. And so now when we get to the infrastructure bill and we're talking about raising corporate taxes, Mansion and Cinema go, oh hell no, I raise all my money from corporations. I will do whatever the Chamber of Commerce says. Now, is Biden really gonna fight back against that? Well, we're about to find out. And he says 2.2 trillion, that sounds like an okay number, good number to start with, right? Except with, that he's starting with it. So when Manchin goes boo, Biden's gonna take it down to 1.1 trillion before you know what hates you. And now all of a sudden you got a tiny infrastructure bill, relatively speaking. And then corporate tax rate, Biden said 28, not 35. Manchin's saying 25. They're gonna bring it to 25. That means Trump basically got his way. He got the giant section of enormous tax cuts for corporations and the wealthy. And Democrats, as always, will then look to make them permanent, okay? And that's a giant loss. So when Biden does Biden, which he's almost certainly gonna do when he runs into actual trouble, then we're gonna see what happens with progressives and what happens with these poll numbers. But I hope to God I'm wrong and Biden's a new man and and he goes, oh yeah, I'm gonna break Manchin. I'm gonna end a filibuster, we're gonna pass HR1, we're gonna pass the infrastructure bill. I'm gonna raise corporate taxes to 35, whatever it is. I'm here for it, I would love it. And then I would be 110% in favor of Biden. But knowing politics, Biden and what we know, it's unlikely. So this kind of feels like George H.W. Bush 
at 91% after the Persian Gulf War. But that was the most perilous 91% you've ever seen. And it turned out that of course, shortly thereafter, he lost the election. Can I add something to that? Something I want to like this plus 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 that you both have said is that I think most people, the dentists, as you just put it, Jank, I think for a lot of people, especially coming out of the Trump administration, just want to be able to ignore the president, want to be able to ignore like the ins and outs of policy and how policy gets formed. And I I completely get that inclination that after the last four years of chaos that we've had, why you'd want to just check out. I think a lot of folks are checked out of the ins and outs of how this kind of stuff gets done. And I really think that we should all really take ownership of staying checked in. So when Biden says something and you know that behind the scenes it's not actually coming to pass, being able to articulate how we hold him accountable and how we keep his feet to the fire. And not just saying, well, I read in the paper that he supports a $15 minimum wage and I don't know, I guess he does. You know, I think that we're all, I understand the inclination to be a little bit checked out, but I think now is the time we really need to be checked in. Yeah, I'll give last word again to one of our members, tyt.com slash join to not only become a member, but become part of the show. So John I says 100% a lot, writes in, (laughs) 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 quoting Biden to donors, quote, nothing will fundamentally change. And then says, I didn't believe it, but it's not looking great guys. $15 minimum wage, nope. Sticking it to MSB, nope. War in Yemen, yep. College debt canceled, nope. Kids in cages, yep, uh, better than Trump, barely. So now he's leaving out some positive things as we talked about earlier yeah. in the segment. But all, are all the things he said true? Yes, and that's what an educated voter looks like.